practice pads. Well, they are important for, um, well, practicing. If you are just starting out uh, on your journey of learning to play drums or you're a parent of somebody who's learning to play drums and they've suddenly announced, Mum, my, my teacher said I, I need to have a practice pad. The choice out there can be overwhelming and some of them can be quite expensive. So this video is all about helping you choose a good first practice pad. I'm going to go through some of the um, some of the more common types of practice pads that you, you find out there to help uh, help you make a decision when uh, when buying one for the first time. If you're uh, an experienced drummer, you probably already know what you want from a, a practice pad. This video is, is aimed at those that are new to the whole thing and are looking at uh, buying their first. I probably won't go into too much depth on particular brands and too many pros and cons and things like that. The idea of this is just a quick overview, some things that you can remember um, when looking and just to give you an idea of what's out there. Okay, so why have a pad in the first place? Um, surely a cushion or a bucket or a tabletop would do? Well, cushions there is absolutely no bounce with a cushion. There's no feel with a cushion. So it's not very good for stick control. Tabletops are fine. They can be noisy. And you're gonna get into trouble for damaging the table. Um, buckets, again, they're fine. They've got a good feel on a bucket, um, but they're noisy they're, and, and they're, you know, they're big. You want something small, something fairly light that you can carry around with you preferably or maybe just uh, put on the top of a, a snare drum um, that has a nice feel to it it feels nice when you hit it bit of bounce so you get some stick control going on and um, doesn't make a um, one hell of a racket when you play it so as I said in the intro there are oh, there are loads of drum pads out there loads and loads and loads this, this is just um, a a few of the ones I've collected over the years and what we're going to do is um, we're going to go through the, m the main types of pad that you'll find out there so as you can see it's, it's quite a range isn't it um, and these range in price from uh, 15 odd pounds on eBay uh, to uh, nearly a hundred pounds so it's it's quite a choice when you're first starting out, you just want something you can practice your sticking with, do your rudiments, something you can sit there playing on without causing loads of uh, disturbance to those around you, and um, something that feels nice. You, you want it to feel nice, so you want to go and practice on it. So let's have a look. In no particular order, let's have a look at the pads that are out there. Well, types of pads are out there. This is um, this is a pad made by Drumio. It's called the Drumio P4, and you can see it's got four different sections on it. Now these sections all sound slightly different, and they have a different feel. So you can see. They give you a different feel and each one has a different bounce characteristic. Now if you're just starting out you don't really need anything um, as fancy as this. The size is nice, it will sit on a snare drum beautifully and it will feel nice when you're playing it. But as I say, when you're just starting out, you don't really need all these different surfaces to play on. And this would set you back an awful lot of money. Nearly all the uh, drumstick manufacturers produce drum pads. This one's um, an A head or a head or however they like you to pronounce it. 
I've had this one for years and years and years. I got this one free when I, I took out a subscription to a magazine. Um, it's, a, it's a nice pad. It's, um, it's got a nice rubber base to it so it won't slip on a table. It's got a little screw that you can screw it into a stand. So you can just put it on a, a symbol stand and practice away on it. It's got a nice feel to it. Might be a little hard, a little harsh. But it, yeah, it'll do. But usually because it's got that on it, because it's a stick manufacturer, you're probably paying 30 odd quid for that, something like that. The other thing is, as I've, I've had this a very long time, and it's been in my studio for quite a long time. And I don't know if you can see there, but the rubber has started to craze. And it's all gone a bit brittle. But having said that, that's probably 15 years old. So this is a Bill Saunders pad. Now, these are lovely. These are really, really nice pads. They've got a beautiful feel to them. They're not too loud. And you can practice your rim shots because it's got this nice metal rim around the side, just like a proper drum. The one thing I would say about these, they've got a nice, they've, oh, they've got a, a soft, soft back to them as well, so they don't. They don't really move very easily on a table and they won't damage your table if you're practicing on your dining room table. They are brilliant, excellent pads, but they're not the cheapest pads out there. I mean, you get what you pay for. You know, you're paying for quality and these are beautifully made. They sound nice, they play nice, it'll last your lifetime. I can highly recommend these. But when you're first buying a drum pad, you probably probably aren't going to want to spend that much money. This is just kind of some generic thing I've had. This was, I think this was one of my first ever pads. Um, you can see it's all chipped and faded and stained and it's had a hard life, this one. Again, it's got a soft bit on the bottom, stop it slipping around on tables. It's got a, a screw saying go onto a, a cymbal stand or something. It's uh, it's rubber, feels nice, hasn't started crazing or breaking off or anything. This is just like your bog stand. This is the kind of thing you'd get for £15 on eBay. This is the perfect starter pad. You know, it's not going to break the bank to buy it. It doesn't matter if... Uh, if you're buying for your, for your son or daughter who's just give, just taken up drums and you think they might give it up in six months' time, £15, you haven't really wasted a great deal of money. So this is a good one to start with. So you're looking for a nice wooden base, something to stop it slipping around and damaging the table, and a nice rubber top. This, this is probably the weirdest pad I've ever, I've ever encountered. Um, I was given a drum kit an old drum kit from one of my students that um, was giving up playing. And they bought these as silencers. These will silence, you put them on a snare drum and they'll, um, they'll make the snare drum a lot quieter for practice. But built into it is a rubber pad. And it's got a screw for like a cymbal stand. So you can put it on a stand. When you put it on a stand, it goes all floppy. It goes a bit weird, look. Yeah, look. But, It's a lovely pad. As I say, I've no, I've, I've never seen these for sale. To be honest, I haven't really looked. I've no idea how much these cost. But as a practice pad, it works a treat. It works an absolute treat. As I say, that came with a drum kit. Lastly. I had to go and make it my own. 
I know. I'm not really a carpenter. I've got a block of wood. I bought some rubber from eBay. Bought a sheet of rubber. See, just, you know. Centimetre, one and a half centimetre thick rubber. It's quite hard though. There's quite a harsh feel to this one. Stuck it to the piece of wood, put some of that grippy stuff underneath it. It works. But it is quite loud. And it's quite hard. But you know, homemade. I had a go at making it. It seems to work okay. So yeah. So, out of all of these, This is going to be your first ever practice pad. Or you might be buying a practice, you know, little Jimmy might have come home from school. Oh, I'm learning to play drums, Mum, and they've told me I've got to buy a practice pad. You don't know where to start, do you? Squeaky chair. Really nice pad. Really nice size. Excellent pad. Probably a bit expensive. Awesome pad, Bill Saunders, awesome, awesome pad. Really cannot recommend these enough. First pad, mm, probably a bit much, but try them. You do, they are worth it though. Excellent value for money. They will last you a lifetime and they are awesome. I wouldn't bother with any coming from a, uh, unless they're particularly cheap, I wouldn't bother with any particular make or name starting off. I mean, as you can see, that's that's the only, apart from the Drumio one and the Bill Saunders one, that has really just not lasted very well at all. Um, good size though. It does feel, feel nice. It feels nice to play. If I was buying them for, the, for one of my kids or I just needed a pad um, for the first time ever while I was just, you know, starting out, I'd probably get something like this. Look on eBay, about 15 odd quid, I reckon. It's just weird, but it works really well. I wouldn't bother making it. By the time you bought the rubber and you bought the wood and you spent all that time cutting it and stuff like that, um, you can probably buy one of those 15 pound ones from eBay. So, how would I use them all? Well, that one, I wouldn't. Play. That one, if I was silencing the rest of my drum kit, I'd stick one of them on the snare. That'd be my go to pad. Probably wouldn't bother. Awesome pad. I have one of these in my bag at all times with a pair of sticks, so wherever I am, I can uh, get some practice in. Really good pad, often have it behind my drums, but it does cost a fair bit. So there you go, lots of different drum pads. So you're gonna ask me which is the best pad to get. I honestly, truthfully don't know, it depends on budget. Um, they're all much the same. To be honest, you need, just need something that sounds nice and feels nice to hit. I personally would recommend not spending too much money if this is your first pad. If you've been playing drums for quite a while, um, you're likely to know exactly what you want any, anyway, whether you want something hard for uh, that fast response or whether you want something softer to build up strength. You'll know anyway. So this video probably isn't for you. As far as I'm concerned, the best pad is the one you enjoy playing. The one that's most convenient to have next to you or carry around with you. The one that's going to encourage you to practice, is going to encourage you to pick up the sticks and play. That's the best pad to buy. Anyway, I'll try and put some links below to some pads and things like that that I've found on the internet that, are, that are, might be worth looking at. At the end of the day, don't buy anything too flimsy. You want, to, you want about...
You want about that much rubber, preferably something soft on the bottom. That's all you need. I hope that's helped. I really do. I really do hope that's helped. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Bye.